Hi, welcome to this new video. My name is Sergio, I'm a computer vision consultant, developer and course instructor, and I help companies and financiers to easy and efficiently build computer vision software. We are going to see right now how to build a prototype in just 48 hours or less than 48 hours. So if, for example, you are very busy, you have time only on the weekend, so either from Saturday morning to uh, Sunday evening, or if you have a bit of more time, even from Friday evening, then if you want to build a solution, you can do that. And I'm going to show you how, in a very short amount of time, we're going to build a computer vision software, like a prototype that can do something very interesting. But also I have a very exciting news. It's something I've been working on for a while. It's a complete workshop, a one hour workshop called Computer Vision Blueprint, where I'm going to show you how you can build a software, a computer vision software to detect and track any object. I'm going to show you a four step action plan where you will learn all the steps necessary to build efficient computer vision solutions. I'm going to put the link down below in the description. It's pysource.com slash blueprint. And you are going to, whether you are a beginner and you've, you've never worked with computer vision, you're going to get all the sources starting from scratch. So that's the way to go. Even if you have already some experience, but you are not sure either you are stuck with your project, you will see there how to, to go further and how to build efficient solutions because it's something I've been working on based on my experience on a lot of projects I've been building for clients and on all the questions I get, uh, I constantly get. So you will find a lot of answers to your questions as well. PySource.com slash blueprint. And now let's to go. The idea of building a prototype is to have something ready very soon as a proof of concept and only later after we get some tests, some results, we can uh, develop that further and release a final product. Now, this is what I've been struggling on with lately and this is how I came up with my idea. So I've been trying to work with monitoring my like the calories and all the food I've been eating for uh, to have a more healthy diet. And to do that, I've been using an app. Uh, let me show you this app with the food that I've been eating recently. Uh, okay, my it's in Italian, but here is a list of the different food that I've been eating recently. So how does this work? It works that when, for example, for lunch, I eat something, I go and select the food. Let's say that I've been eating for lunch just four eggs. So I select the four eggs right here. You see we have number four, that's for the eggs. Wovo Sodo, it's eggs. And then we have the calories for the eggs, 308 calories. We have the fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. And I've been doing this for a while, just a couple of weeks, and then it was very annoying because each for each single food, you have to put uh, the calories, save that here, and it's very annoying. If you eat multiple times a day, sometimes you forget, and then all the stats are going to get messed up because if you miss a day, then it looks like that day you, have, you had zero calories and you had no food. So I've been thinking, is there a way to make some software with artificial intelligence which can do everything without me always typing and adding the food? So this is what the idea that I came up with. Uh, so what I'm doing right now to calculate the calories is something like this. Let's say that my lunch is composed by just four large eggs, one, two, three, four, let's say that today I'm going to eat one cucumber and I put this right here and then some fruit, just one banana, uh, which could be more or less like this. So let's say that this is my lunch today. So what I normally do is I take the phone, I go on the app and I select First I select four eggs, four eggs, and then I put, with the eggs you don't have to put even like the, the weight, so you can just put large eggs, and usually eggs are very similar in size, doesn't matter where you are, just 
small, medium and large. That's what you can expect from an egg. So it's easy, at least with the eggs, to count the calories. And then we have, let's say, the cucumber. With the cucumber, it gets a bit more complex because the cucumbers, they have very different sizes. So you can just put that you ate one cucumber, but you also have to check the weight of the cucumber. So first you have to take to put it on a scale, then you need to select it on the phone and then just go on cucumber, how many grams, let's say 150 grams, and then you save. Same is for the banana. They are all different in sizes. You need to go select bananas and so on. It's very annoying. So what can we do with this? Uh, let me tell you what is the solution that I've been thinking to build. So this is my lunch on one side of oh, lunch. And this is my revolutionary calorie counter app. Calorie counter their software. And of course, I'm just uh, doesn't don't, don't look how I'm writing I'm writing fast now. And the concept is very simple. I want to be able to take the fruit, so I will take the banana. I want to place the banana somewhere here on the table. Let's say we will take the banana here. And ideally there will be a camera watching the banana or any food that I put from the top. So this is the camera, camera. Then on the screen, there will be maybe some screen which say banana detected. And then it say calories, I don't know, 150 calories. And I just say, okay, and I just press, let's say one button, enter, okay. So I press the button and I put the eggs, I press the button and then it say, your lunch is 250 calories. Okay, maybe that's too low. Your lunch is 500 calories. And then you just click save and you have everything, all the information that you want to save without going through the phone, writing everything. So I've been thinking, this is quite an interesting thing and probably this will help everyone that is trying to work on a diet and you don't want to overcomplicate things. If you have such a prototype, then it's going to make your life easier. And we're going to build this in a very short amount of time. We will see all the step and hardware that we take and try and see how that works. Let's go. Uh, let me now show you the hardware that I have in the kitchen. What is my initial idea? Uh, we have a scale and on the scale there will be the fruit or whatever, any food. There will be a camera on top. The camera should detect uh, through, of course, connected to some device, should detect what is right there. And then from the scale, we need to get like the weight of the food right there. And then on the screen right here, we will play around with the screen. So we will see uh, this food has been detected. It has dot calories, dot protein, carbohydrates, and so there will be some button that we press, okay, and then this will be added, and then we place another food that I don't have in this exact moment, but then we go to the next. That's the very basic idea, and I'm planning to use NVIDIA Jetson Xavier. Uh, this will be uh, to process the artificial intelligence. It's a very good device for this prototyping uh, things uh, so either just some severe just some just some nano they they both will work fine or even the computer but next severe would be better because it's more portable so i don't need, i don't need to have a laptop uh, right here then you might have seen also this one uh, this is a second option so this is uh, the raspberry pi with a scale and this scale is very interesting because it's connected exactly to the Raspberry Pi. And so we place the food on this scale and we get everything connected. So we get just right on the Python code, the weight of the object that, that we place on this scale. So this uh, second option that I have to make this work, uh, because when I use a normal scale, of course, the scale is not connected to any device. There is no way that we can connect this one. So 
the idea which is more complex and it's so if I can't manage in 48 hours to make this so the idea is that the camera from the top is going to read also this seven segment display screen and is going to understand what's written there so if this solution for any reason will not be reliable that is a backup plan with everything connected which will then need to work with the Raspberry, the Raspberry Pi. So these are a couple of solutions that I have in mind. I will start excluding this kit right here and go with the more sophisticated one. And as a backup plan, if I'm running out of time and I need to prototype working, I will switch to this solution with this scale that I got from AliExpress. So let's now start building something. Uh, so I just started with the project and probably I need already to switch to plan B and I'm, go I'm going to show you why I have this problem. So first I took a lot of images with the idea of building a detector to be able to detect uh, most of the food that I have right here. So uh, tomatoes, kiwi, the pear, banana, avocado, mango and a few other things probably that I have, probably a lemon. And the idea was also read using some OCR like um, optical engine to, to read the weight of the product that is right here. And you can guess already the problem. It's very hard to read the number. First, it's too far. But even if we zoom that in, it's not that clear. And also I noticed in some pictures, there is some problem. Mm, for example, this one. Okay, the, uh, the, there was something where there is, when there is some shadow or the lightning is not so clear. For example, this one, the OCR will probably not be very reliable. And also, not the fact that it won't be very reliable, it's that it's quite complex. So uh, I'm confident that I will achieve, that I will be able to do that, but not in a short time. It might take days of improving this and make some research on how to uh, perform a very good OCR on this. So I need to uh, not use this option and I will switch now to the Raspberry Pi with the scale connected, directly connected to the uh, Python code. So this is the first reason why I had two options for, for the scaling. Uh, and so I will proceed this way. Second, anyway, I'm going to keep these pictures and I'm going to build a detector. So now I'm going to work on both these things and we will see how this is going to work. Let's see. Uh, and now I'm going to train a model to detect the fruit. Ideally, we want to start soon with this operation because this might take hours to train. And so while it is training, I'm going to do something else. For example, I'm going to prepare the Raspberry Pi as I decided to use the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm going to connect the touch screen. I'm going to connect the scale and I'm going to also to calibrate the scale to see if it works in, uh, working correctly, to see how it works with the weights and so on. Uh, this is a notebook that I'm using from my courses because the, from the course object detection with OpenCV Deep Learning, because this will make things very fast for the training. So I just put uh, the images with the annotation in one folder. I choose the model, so I'm, I have a different model to choose. I use the tiny YOLO version for because we want something fast. The tiny YOLO will work on the Raspberry Pi and it's fast and light. So after that, I'm going to just uh, run the training and probably it will take an hour because it's a very small model. And so I will keep going with the rest after this. Uh, while the computer is preparing the model to take the fruit, uh, I'm going to work on the Raspberry Pi. So I've just connected everything, this with the chip and then with the scale, and then of course with the screen. And by the way, this is a touch screen that later I'm going to use as a graphic user interface. What I'm trying to see right now is to make sure that the scale works so that I, that I can calibrate it and so I'm going to run the code. By the way, this is a library to run. Oh, which, okay, I get some error because I was, I was using it. Okay, now it's working. This is a library to use the scale. And you might be wondering, why did you use the Raspberry Pi instead of the Jetson Xavier? And the reason is 
because this chip doesn't have the library for the Xavier but only for the Raspberry Pi. So I can't use this scale with the Xavier because they both, Raspberry Pi and Xavier, they both have a GPIO. The GPIO is the series of 40 pins. They look exactly the same, but they don't work the same way. So the library that works for the Raspberry Pi doesn't work there and this is a pity and because I was I really wanted to use like Xavier for this project. But it doesn't matter. I am going to use a, a lighter model for the detection and it will work anyway. So let's try the scale. Uh, we see here some output in real time. This is the result that we are getting from the scale. So ideally when we put something on the scale, this should change. They are on the range between 6, 20, minus 25, so they are in that range. If I put an object on the scale, we see a very different number, which doesn't, doesn't mean nothing unless we make a calibration. So I will calibrate the camera by, by following the libraries, the documentation instructions, so that I can understand how to convert these numbers into graphs. I will do that and I will show you the results. I just did the calibration with a very professional approach. So I just used the number that was appearing there. I have this package of rice, this Bulgarian rice, which I know that it's supposed to be one kilogram. So I just calibrated one kilogram with the number that I was getting there. And now we can, we have this converted into grams. We have 999.65. So it's probably not the best calibration, but it's somewhere close to one kilogram. So it's just wrong of half gram. So it's quite good calibration, I would say. So the, uh, the, the scale is working very well. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I will check the computer to see how the progress is with the training. And then we are ready to build the graphic user interface with the entire program. So also a quick check on the training after just around half hour or a bit more uh, because it, it's in general very fast. Uh, we only 100 plus images. We got already close to 100% of accuracy. This is the model in progress. So let me test the model and see what we are already getting right now. This is the result of the model that I got so far, which is supposed to detect nine different elements. We have uh, a type of fruits in general, not only fruits because there is also the egg between among the fruits, uh, plus the chopping board or the scale. So you see we have the scale. Ideally, I'm going to use this rectangle right here. And so I say if the element is inside the chopping board, which is supposed to be above the scale, then we're going to, uh, we, we will uh, make the sum of the, the weight of the specific object. It's not 100% perfect, but it's very good. You see some elements is not detected, uh, but it's a very small model and for such low images in just half hour, we, we have very, very good accuracy. And this is, again, I want to emphasize this uh, by using this training notebook right here that I've created and it's only part of the object action with OpenCV deep learning. I've created this notebook which runs on the computer, but also I created a version for Google Colab if you don't have a computer with a graphic card and also that doesn't require any installation because this makes things very fast. I just put in a few minutes the images with the annotation for the training and then it was ready to go. Everything automatic. So this is very important if you want to save a lot of time and you don't want to waste countless hours, days and weeks to solve problems instead of making the actual work. And uh, it's working well, this model. So now I can already focus on the next step, which would be building a very basic user interface, integrating this with the program. And only later we can switch everything into the Raspberry Pi and we will be ready to the final release of the program and the test. So I'm going to show you now what will be the next. Uh, I've been working on a very basic user interface. This one doesn't take that long to, to code. It's just a few lines where we need to show the frame on the screen. Of course, it, it will not show me. Uh, it will show like the camera, which is on top, uh, which gets like the chopping board, the scale with all the fruits that we have there. On the side, we want each time that the fruit is detected, we want to get 
the fruit, also the weight of the fruit, and then we will make the sum of all the foods and the calories. Let's try this one. So I'm going to reset this one. So you see there is an empty list. When we put the fruit on the scale, we will ideally click detect. The fruit will be detected. Of course, now we have tomato. Let's suppose that this is working well. Of course, later with the fruit, it will work well. We see tomato, then let's add this to the list. It will con be connected to the scale. It will take the grams. We have one gram, it's 18 calories, one gram of tomato. And I'm not 18, 0 0.18. Uh, oh, I, I just click again and then we see also the sum how many kilograms and the thought of the calories uh, everything is now ready because I connected this already with the fruit detector so I'm going to take this code I'm going to move this code inside the Raspberry Pi and we will see how this will work with the full screen, the touch screen and in real time. So let's try that. And we're now watching an example of me testing this in real time directly on the Raspberry Pi. So uh, this is the Raspberry Pi connected to the scale. And we have right here the screen where we have the program with the user interface running. And of course, this was just an example that I used for this specific program but you can do an unlimited amount of prototypes for anything in the computer vision so anything that needs visual recognition you can do that and i recommend again to watch the blueprint workshop link down below on the description it's free for the moment this is all just remember if you like this video and if you want to see more like this to uh, subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment or let me know what you think about this video about this project and what project you would like to see and to do. See you in the next one.